Part four, as we continue on building this 330 mile top fuel dragster. Now I'm having to take some 120 wall inch and a quarter chromoly tubing. And what I'm having to do is machine it down to two different sizes. What, one of them's going into the 065 tubing, which is the new thicker tubing that's gonna be put on. And then adapting it to the 049 tubing, which is what's on the inside of some of the structural support for the front end stuff. So what we're doing now is part of the stuff that I wasn't going to show you, but I am showing you, but you're not going to get all of it. I have to adjust this chassis now to the arch that I want, okay? So I'm having to move this chassis up, and I'm not going to tell you exactly how much I'm doing it, but just believe me that it is going up because I want this motor angle different from what it was. I want this car to also be able to arch up easier, especially under hot conditions, things when the track's 120 some degrees, when you really got to throw it down and we separate the boys from the girls out on the track. That's what my cars do well, and this is part of that experience of what it's going to get. I can't tell you how many times that I check, you know, the up and the side to side on this thing to make sure it's right. This here, um, it sets the tone for the car, how it drives the whole nine yards, how it reacts. And it's a, it's a big thing for me to do. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start throwing in some pipe. Where this pipe lands is pretty critical. Um, when I first looked at this thing, these things were gonna cross paths. You know, the right frame rail was gonna go where the left went and the left was gonna go towards the right. And it was a train wreck until we got these horns, you know, straightened out on this thing. Now, these are the horns, what I'm talking about. Now, they've got a peekaboo hole. That's a new rule now. So when you shove this pipe in, you gotta be able to see that pipe and that's where it has to at least go the minimum distance in. Some of these guys weren't getting these pipes all the way in and uh, it didn't say it was causing issues, but I'll tell you what, on down the road it was probably going to. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm scribing my pipe again and I'm indexing it where it goes and just seeing where these things land at. So yeah, some of you say, oh, you're arching the pipe and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's probably happening. A lot of manufacturers don't do that. I'm not gonna show you how I do it, but um, I'm pretty happy with the way these things landed. You know, these are just free hanging and you can see, uh, you know, where they ended up at. I'm, I was really, really surprised that it, it did that well as much as we had to move some of these horns around. And then some of you can say, oh man, look at how much arch that has. No, that pipe is actually hanging. And if you hang chromoly tubing like that, yeah, it looks like it's, you know, spun up and arched like that. So I'm gonna clean these tubes up. And what I have to do now is I'm going to add um, actually some, um, some doublers. There's one area by the fuel tank that does not get a cross member underneath the fuel tank. So you, per the NHRA spec, you have to have a, a, a doubler on it. So I'm sliding these on now because you can't slide them on later. Well, you can slide them on later. You just have to cut the front end back off of it. So the way these are gonna work, they're actually going to support a cross member, you know, an upright, if you wanna say. And the bottom of the upright will be welded to the frame rail on the lower rail. The upper one's gonna float. And not only is it gonna float, but it's gonna have some stops on it. Now you can have a minimum and a maximum of stop movement per NHRA specs. So that's what we're gonna go do to that top one. Cause you know, sometimes if you lock all that stuff in, it puts it in a bind and it creates a hot spot on the chassis. So by having some things move around a little bit, it actually frees up, you know, high stress areas. Now this bottom one, what we'll do is we'll rosette it and then we'll just weld it down the side just a little bit. And that's what'll hold it in place. We're not gonna weld all the way around the tube. You never wanna really do that. So, while I'm getting this thing all ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch of these things because you know I got two or three cars I need to do here in the next uh, couple of weeks. So I'm just gonna go ahead while I'm all set up, just kind of slice some of this stuff and get them ready to go. You wouldn't believe how much time it takes though, like to cut these sleeves and then you gotta cut the stops for them and then you gotta deburr all of them. By the time you look up, you know an hour went by, but you know that's an hour that's probably way ahead because you're getting this stuff all done uh, so you don't have to drop what you're doing the next time. You can just pick up some parts and keep on jamming. 
So now what I'm going to do, I've put the front end back up on here. And I say front end, I'm, when I say that is the original front end piece, you know, that holds the spindles and stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these frame rails up against this. Now that I have the, the main frame rails all the way in the horns, you know, where the driver sits. And I'm going to mark these with tape. And I'm just going to carefully mark them and get them exactly so they match up. So when I slide this front end back on with those insert pieces that I made, it'll all match up real nice. You know, normally I have other people helping me, you know, when I'm doing this kind of stuff, but you know, with our budget and all that kind of stuff, I just haven't had that. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is just taking so much more time for me um, because I'm pulling off all these little projects that I always took for granted that I had other people help me with. But you know what? It's great to revisit every aspect again when doing this stuff, you know. Um, it makes you a better teacher on later on when you do have people around. And I just think, it, you know, if you're able to hand off some of your traits to other generations, uh, that way it, it just don't get lost in the shuffle as time goes on. So I got everything marked. I'm going to go ahead and knock this uh, front end section back off here so I can get a hold of these pipes and then go ahead and get these things trimmed uh, where they need to be. That way, so when I slide this thing on there, I don't want much of a gap. Now, I want a little bit of a gap because you need some area for weld. You just don't want to weld on top of pipe. You know, any good pipe fitter knows you need to have some kind of fillet. So I tried my damn saw. Guess what? Every time I use it, it does nothing but just wear the blade out of it. So I got these, uh, these really good hacksaw blades back in the day. And I'll tell you what, I, seriously, I've had them probably for 10 years. And I bought like a 10 pack and I still have like eight left. And I mean, these things are amazing. And, but they work so well. And you know what? It's just time to get your hands dirty and use a little power and uh, get these things cut off right. You actually can control a hacksaw way better than you can one of those damn things. Anyway, so I'm drilling some holes in the side here so we can do some rosettes. And um, looks like I'm going to drill through my wrist here, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> I have done that before. I got a scar that even proves it. And uh, yeah, it wasn't the smartest thing in the world. But anyway, I'll get these things drilled up. And then we're gonna clean up the inside of the pipe and we're gonna get ready to get this thing finally mounted on here for good. So my best friend who was my car chief on Terry's car is the car chief on uh, Clay Milliken's car. And he stopped by to see me today. It was a, a great surprise. I'm glad he was here because me and him work so damn well together. Uh, it's kind of like being married for a real long time and you know, you know where you throw your underwear in the corner and your wife grabs it and yells at you and throws it back at you in exactly the same spot all the time. Well, it's kind of like that, but not really. But anyway, it, it's great to have him around and be able to talk with him a little bit about, you know, everything that's current in NHRA and what's going on and who's doing what. And it just kind of keeps everything up to date. But anyway, so I, I put these nubs inside this front end and these are the pieces that are going to go inside the new tubing. And so these are the adapters uh, to mate these two together. And this is what she looks like. And all this stuff is over 70,000. So yeah, it definitely meets all the spec, you know, for the 065 front end stuff. So I'll clean these out one last time, you know, from doing the rosette welds and things like that, finishing up the front end. And then I'm going to have Chris help me, uh, get this thing started. They're all at you know, pretty much the exact same length. It takes a little bit of finesse in here and there, but you know what? It actually, it worked pretty good. Now you do damn sure you're putting four pipes in something where I've only got a couple thou clearance. Um, I tell you what, it, it actually went together pretty nice. That's what happens when you do your homework and you make sure that these tubes are straight. Now, if you're putting these things in a bind and trying to put that thing together, that don't work out so good. You're going to be beating the crap out of this thing. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised at how nice it did go together. I'm basically just hitting on this thing, making some noise. I don't know if you see my little plastic hammer I have there, but uh, it did. It, it went together pretty good. Even Chris's. Damn, Winland, that went together pretty nice. So there she is. All the rails are in place and... It looks pretty good. You know, what's really cool is when you can check that you get things together right is that you can grab these tubes and I can twist them. They're not in a bind. 
And that means that this thing's in place where it needs to be. I'm telling you, the longevity of this car will be better, the way it works will be better, and I think it'll be way safer. The next step is we'll be putting on all of our uh, accessories here to, to hold this old girl in place while we're gonna put all the cross members and things like that in it. So, so the way I do this is all my stuff is floating. You know, I do clamp it down, but it is just sitting on top of basically a ball. These pipes are in a, like a neutral area. They're not being forced one direction or another. They're just being held right. Now, I will adjust them up and down just a little bit to get, you know, uh, exactly where I want it in height and to make sure that it's even coming off of the driver's area. But they're not going to be in a bind. They'll be free floating. So, And I'll watch these things as I start putting the cross members in it and then start welding it together. I can watch it. If it starts to lift off one side or the other, I'll just stop welding there. I know where to go and I can actually make it go back down. So a, a lot of probably teams don't take that amount of time uh, when they're welding one of these things up. Plus they have one guy on each side and they're fully holding these things, you know, uh, solid when they're welding them, which is, that's okay too. But when I do it this way, I just feel like I can actually chase the pipe a little easier um, with my welds and which way that I'm welding. So tomorrow we're gonna start making cross members. We're gonna start tacking them in place. We're gonna start using some of my other uh, uh, fixture pieces to you know keep things in line as we're putting you know these cross members and stuff like that in so tomorrow will be a big day um, I was really presently surprised um, and, and happy with the outcome um, I'll use these things actually to keep everything square as it's going together but um, I got a lot of stuff to do here's the, the two-seat car we're gonna put a front end on this deal then I got the old margarita uh, machine is back and we're gonna make some belt guards and some cool things for it just to keep it safe around people when we're whacking the gas on this thing. Keep in mind, that's a real nitro car, so. Anyway, there's plenty of work to do here at the old Windland shop. I better get my ass going. Thanks for watching.